Uh, so hopefully everyone here knows who's standing behind me. Uh, this is Brian LaRue. Give him a hand. <laughs> right there, untapped. Uh, and he's going to be presenting on PhoneGap 2X, the future 2X. Uh, so that was an awesome talk by Dan. Emulate.phonegap.com is a really big deal. We're super excited about that. Um, before, before I get into it, uh, I want to say thank you to Colleen and Rhonda for organizing PhoneGap Day. Um, <laughs> pretty awesome conference. Uh, really pro job. They did a great job. Um, and uh, all the speakers, too. Everybody else that's been here today. A lot of content, a lot of fast-moving content, so I hope it wasn't too intense. I won't talk too much, don't worry. Um, let's get into it. I'll talk a lot later. So Andre talked a, a bit about the numbers earlier, and in aggregate, they're super interesting. There's a lot of people using PhoneGap, and um, if we look at the total downloads, and this is just over the last one year period because we were stupid, and in the first couple years of PhoneGap, we didn't use any analytics, but now that we are checking our analytics, we can see that we're getting lots of downloads at, on a pretty regular cadence, and that's a term I like to use a lot. Um, and if you look at the numbers, you can't read them super well, but in general, we're seeing roughly 100,000 downloads a month, which would be indicative to me that we have most well, certainly at least 100,000 PhoneGap developers. So that's cool. Um, if, we, if we look at all those downloads and then we look at uh, how many people are visiting PhoneGap.com itself, it's insane. There's a huge amount of traffic coming to the website and it's only growing, uh, obviously, in July. It's not done yet. But, um, so that's cool. Um, but that's not actually that interesting. What's really interesting is the geographic distribution of all these different people that are using PhoneGap. So we have a huge audience here in North America, uh, or in the Americas, but we also have a massive audience in Europe and a very quickly growing audience in Asia, um, just about equally distributed. So if we go and look at the top 10, um, USA is obviously really big, but right after it's India and China um, is in the top five. If I looked at the stats last year at this time, neither India nor China were in the top five. Uh, they weren't even in the top 10. And so we're seeing massive growth uh, from, from the emerging markets. We're not sure exactly what this means, but I think as app developers, it's really important that you know that this is happening today. And we're, we're going to be keeping an eye on that. So I think this is the last chart, so don't worry, I won't be too nerdy. Um, if you look at the Apache Jira, uh, you'll see a chart that shows the amount of issues that have been opened versus the amount of issues that have been closed, uh, if you can manage to navigate our Jira. Um, and once you do find that chart, uh, it'll show green or red. And most Apache projects, in fact, all of them will show red. There'll be more issues being open than closed, and ours will show green. Um, I don't love those colors, though. I was talking to Joni about this. The, the colors red and green would indicate that if there's an issue opened, it's a bad thing. It's actually not a bad thing. It's a good thing. So this chart, I feel, is a lot more indicative of the kind of activity that's going on. Um, in October, since we joined Apache, we've been seeing this big ramp up um, of people contributing back to the project. And we're now closing more issues than we're opening, which is amazing. Um, it doesn't really happen in software very often. So it's a, it's a pretty remarkable achievement by, by the contributors. So the name thing. <laughs> we're sorry, I guess. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so phone gaps are distribution of Apache Cordova. Um, and, and I don't feel it's that hard. Um, and uh, moving forward in the future, <laughs> Call, callback was stupid, straight up. It was a totally dumb idea, but seemed like a good idea at the time. Um, callbacks. Uh, so one thing that we, we could see moving forward in the future, that there may be a difference between Cordova and PhoneGap, and the only difference would be that we might start adding tooling from PhoneGap build into the PhoneGap distribution. Um, but that's not something that's going to happen today, and PhoneGap itself will always remain uh, Apache licensed and free. So Cordova is really what we're talking about, and Originally, we were like, okay, Brian will do some kind of future talk. What's, what's the future of, of PhoneGap, as it were? Um, but PhoneGap's a community effort, and we're an Apache Software Foundation project, and it's really a consensus-based um, system and a meritocracy. And so in order to see what the future of PhoneGap is, well, you have to be a part of it, and you have to be involved. It's not up to us or any one individual. Um, but I can tell you some of the stuff that we have some consensus on the project about what we feel should happen uh, moving forward. Also. We can never remember any of the Apache URLs because they're, they're a little masochistic. So Michael Brooks was smart, and he registered Cordova.io. We're not sure if we're supposed to do that or not, but you can just go to Cordova.io to uh, find all the information you need about the open source end. 
So uh, last year we shipped uh, Windows Phone 7, which is a really big deal, um, thanks to Matt Lacey and uh, Jesse McFadden. And this year we can see that there's going to be two new big platforms uh, coming out. Um, from Intel and Samsung, we're seeing Tizen, and we're really excited about the Butigecko effort from Mozilla. Um, and we know we're going to support both of those, so we're calling them sort of Horizon platforms. Tizen source has actually already been contributed and is ready to go. It's just buggy and, uh, well, nobody actually owns a Tizen phone yet, so um, it's got that going for it. So the next thing that we all can agree on is that it's time for an API audit. Uh, we've had roughly the same API for about a year, um, although it's, it's changed a bit. So we're going to go through and we're going to look at all the core APIs. I don't want you to freak out. Um, this doesn't mean that we're just going to start deprecating stuff right away and screwing you over um, like we did in 1.5. We're going to <laughs> maybe 1.9. Um, so the rough consensus that we have, and, and there's still a lot of discussion happening on the mailing list, how this is going to work moving forward, is that we're going to keep APIs around for at least six months with a shim and a deprecation notice. Uh, we may end up moving to a parallel dev track, and Pat Mueller and Andrew Lunny both feel this is a good idea. They're reasonably smart people, and I think we should be listening to them when it comes to this. So I'm pretty sure that's what could end up happening, but I don't know that's what will happen. But we know for sure we're not going to break you if we can. So developer ergonomics is another issue. Um, Phil, when he was still awake, is he awake? Oh, there he is. He's back. Uh, Phil showed you guys like a hint of what's to come on the command line tooling side. Command line tooling is not something to be afraid of, and this is a future that I'm really excited about. We want you to be able to NPM install PhoneGap and be able to work with all aspects of the platforms without having to know what platform you're working with. Um, in the future, you could imagine a command like Cordova emulate, which would be really cool. So, yeah, I don't know why. That dude's just awesome. Um, aliens. He's on the History Channel. Like, what the fuck is with that? Um, so, uh, plug-in discovery is going to definitely be our biggest issue moving forward. And so there's this idea that we have is that PhoneGap should, should really be the lightest possible core. Um, PhoneGap itself uh, today comes uh, with something crazy like, how many APIs do we have, you think? Docs.sencha.com, what's that? Um, so they, yeah, we ship with all these different APIs. And that's great, but most apps will probably only use one or two of those APIs. So it doesn't make sense for you to ship with all this stuff. It also, it's a, it's a security risk, frankly. So Moving forward, um, the idea will be that PhoneGap is just a bridge. And that bridging technology will allow you to install different plugins for the scenarios that you're involved in. Um, we're thinking that we would like to split the discovery mechanism up into three sort of buckets. And so very much like the way Ubuntu universes work or Debian packages work, you could have core plugins, which is our currently supported APIs. You'd have community ones, which is kind of Wild West. Well, you might have vendor ones, which is also Wild West, but it's like supported by different organizations. An example of this could be Facebook plugins might exist in the Facebook organization. So that's something that we, we definitely would like to see happen within the next year. Oh. Oh, by the way, these slides are available online if you couldn't tell by the URL bar. Um, so the PhoneGap projects, I think something that like, attracted people to PhoneGap early on was that we had crazy goals. Uh, our first goal is that we believed in the web as a first class platform, and a lot of people thought that was nuts. And then we told them that we, we believed that we should cease to exist, and they knew we were nuts. Um, the idea isn't that we, we believe we should cease to exist in a nihilistic sense, but we believe that these things should be a part of the browser. And so when I'm thinking about the future, um, there's a newly minted group of the W3C called the SysApps group. Um, there used to be the DAP. The DAP is, is still around. It's still functional. Um, but SysApps is more, a lot more like what working group is um, to HTML5. It's, it's a group of browser vendors uh, that want to see the idea of installable web apps come to fruition. Uh, the first part of the effort is going to be around um, looking at capabilities and permission models, and so the ability to install an application and what that means. Uh, we're going to be a part of that, and we're going to definitely be involved in uh, making sure that it happens um, with the PhoneGap plugins APIs. So last thank you to all the contributors that are here. There's a lot of committers. Um, I think we're going to be doing a lightning round. After that, we're going to be drinking beer. If you meet a committer, shake their hand. Um, they're all here, and a round of applause for those guys. <laughs> and then finally, my obligatory Batman slide. Everyone read it. Oh, you can't read it. <laughs> oh, the voice. I, I don't know how to do Joker. 
change the name to callback, and you call me crazy, and then Batman says, Apache Cordova, and he says, everyone calls it PhoneGap anyhow. It's not really that funny. <laughs> it's like, it's the best I could do. Thank you, everybody.